Hey, how's it going everyone? Seth with Global Voltage here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a test on one of the more contentious topics of the DIY lithium community today, and that is PCB bus boards. And what I mean by that is we, we have a solid piece of PCB and in place of bus bars, we're using this as kind of like a bus board where it hooks up all the cells. It's kind of pre-labeled and it's pretty simple overall, but um, I know it's definitely a hot topic. A lot of people say they're not gonna carry enough current. They're going to get way too hot. And so I actually have the, the most recent version of Jehu Garcia's PCB headway bus boards and we're going to, to test them a little bit. We're going to see if they can actually carry enough current for headway cells because headways are pretty powerful. Um, and just we're gonna we're gonna look at the temperature. We are gonna look at the current. Make sure that it can supply the current that doesn't get too hot. Um, ideally, we'll stay below 120. 130 is okay Fahrenheit. Um, we definitely don't want to see anything in the 140s. That's that's starting to get a bit too hot for, you know, anything that's going to be constantly heated to that high. So, I mean, degradation, I think headways are actually rated for a maximum of around 140, maybe a little bit higher. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about the, the bus board for a minute and then we'll get the test started. Okay, so what I have here is the the latest, as far as I know, um, headway bus bar. So you can see this is for a 64 amp hour headway. And it's pre-labeled, you have your positive, so you know over here, these would be positive up, negative, so negative down. And these are a little bit different than the last version in that the last version had it clumped sideways. So this one just has each row straight across. I, I kind of like that better. Um, and they also come with two gauge attachments for outputs. So I'm not going to be running with those today. Um, if this gets hot, then I'll go ahead and look to source some two gauge just so I can do, you know, do it by the book, everything, how it comes. But I think that what I have hooked up today is going to be fine. So, um, I have a pair of four zero power wires. Um, going to a shunt and then I have the ground. I, I will admit it's not two four zero. It's a, it's a two zero and a four zero. Um, so again, but we're going to be pulling about 500 amps. So that should be more than sufficient for that. Um, the test, it just goes to the shunt and then we will have a video display monitor that we will be able to monitor the current with, and I will be using a temperature gun to periodically check the, the temperature of the cells, check the temperature of the board, especially where our connections are and kind of in the middle where a lot of current will be flowing. So we'll check all over it. Um, yep, so let's go ahead and get started with the tests. Okay, so I have everything hooked up here. I'm gonna get a base temperature. Everything is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Testing all around the cells. Highest we have is 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 500 amps through this bank and see how the, the temperature does. Okay, so we got a 91.12, but that is absolutely nothing to worry about. I'm 
And I think that is actually, looks like coming from the cell itself, not from the PCB. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off now. Okay, so as you can see, I'm actually very impressed. Um, I definitely thought it was going to get warmer than it did, but it looks like, you know, after a sustained 500 amp burst for quite a while, um, the warmest part is definitely the cells, not the, I mean, this is cool to the touch. So there you go. It says a thousand amps. Um, you could already see the voltage was sagging. We're not even going to get 500 amps from a 64 amp hour headway, not above 12 volts, but we were able to get a sustained 500 amp pull regardless. And the PCB is what we wanted to test and it, it did what it said it would. It did actually pretty well. Okay guys, so in conclusion, um, like I said, I'm pretty impressed with the performance. I was not expecting that. It handled it very well. Um, the board actually handled it better handled it better than the batteries did um you could see we were when we were pulling this you know we were pulling 500 amps the batteries themselves they couldn't handle 500 amps but that's irrelevant as far as the amount of amperage going through the board itself um that said you can't just throw you know this pcb board in the back of your car so i would like to take a chance to show uh, we do have these clear cases in stock, and in this example, I just threw this together for a mock-up to show what it would look like, but um, it's a clear case. It fits very, very well. Uh, I would recommend a, at least a couple of wires coming off of the terminals. You could probably flip these around um, on the PCB itself, but uh, it's a pretty slick case. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than an H7 battery, not too much. It's taller. It's about the same dimensions otherwise. And you can see it just fits perfectly down in there and it is resealable. You just screw it shut. Um, big beefy M8 terminals here and here. So then you just basically wire it up to this case, seal up your case, and then much easier to mount and you are good to go. So, um, you know, I mentioned I'm not the biggest fan of headways, but I know, you know, it's what a lot of people are doing. So if, if you're doing it for the DIY experience or, you know, whatever circumstances has you required to do a headway bank, um, you know, these bars do work and hey, we have a pretty slick case for it. I will leave that link down below. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know.